Time to rank Stephen King. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with X Books and we are in holiday season, as you can tell by my holiday armadillo shirt, friends reference. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a ranking the Stephen King books I read in 2022. Alright, I read eight Stephen King books this year. It's less than what I wanted, but I did read some pretty decent chunkers and the two new releases that came out this year. Um, I have one collection in here and the rest are all just novels. Um, so there are some really good ones. I had some in the middle that were kind of like middle-ish, and then I had one that definitively was just not as good as the others, and you will see that one at the beginning. So we'll have these linked down below if you're intrigued with any of them. Um, also, don't forget to check out Danielle's channel, the podcast, all that stuff. Um, and as you could tell, honestly, since October, it's been a little rough with our videos. It's just been tiresome lately. So we're in holiday season, list season. I'm gonna rank some books for you, and uh, yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the ranking. All right, so the first book up, uh, it's I'm going in order, obviously, from least favorite to most favorite. Um, to me, I don't think it should be as big as a surprise. Um, Gwendy's Final Task, the one he wrote with Richard Chismar. This, I had really high hopes for. Um, I read this when it got released. I think this was the February release. I think it was February or March or something like that. Um, but this is the conclusion to the trilogy of Gwendy, um, and honestly, I'm so glad that it is over, because I honestly just, the first book in this trilogy, I think, was my, by far, my favorite, and this one, she's tasked to, like, go to space and deliver some box, like, or, or like, blow it up or send it out into space and some weird things. They literally have a picture of, like, a tower on here, in reference to probably, like, the Dark Tower. I just didn't get those vibes whatsoever from this book, and I was really disappointed with it. Um, I wanted more references, I wanted more Dark Tower stuff, I would say. Um, it just kind of fell flat for me, and honestly, I think I gave this three stars. Um, I mean, that just goes to show that I had a lot of pretty decently rated books this year, um, and you know, you might disagree with me, but whatever, it's my list. But yes, Gwendy's Final Task. Eighth place, three stars. It really just didn't hit for me. So, I don't know. There you have Gwendy's Final Task at number eight. All right, coming in at number seven, I've got the collection I read this year, and that is Skeleton Crew. Uh, only reason why it's not higher, it, I feel weird ranking collections just because, like, I don't know, I, mean, I guess you can rank the collection as a whole. I have my list in here and it averaged out to about 3.9 stars. The main stories that stuck out to me, The Raft, as you know, The Monkey, um, Word Processors of the Gods, Grandma. Grandma was terrifying. That, that story was just frightening. Um, there's another one in here that was really good that I liked. The Jaunt, um, The Mist, obviously. Um, then there's another one, UOT. What is that one? I don't remember what that one is. Um, but yeah, Uncle Otto's Truck. That one was rude, too. Um, a lot of good stories in this one. I really did enjoy this. Again, those are my favorites. Um, Grandma, The Raft, The Monkey, and The Mist. Probably my top four. Um, to round it off, I probably would go with uh, the uh, word processors of the gods. Enjoy most of them. Uh, averaged out to about 3.9 stars. Um, there were some fives, there were some fours, there were some twos. Uh, I have a cheat sheet in here that I wrote down for all of them. Um, but yeah, no, good collection, really enjoyable, uh, in seventh place is Skeleton Crew. Alright, coming in in sixth place, I have Rose Matter. This ended up getting four stars. It was actually a pretty decent book. What I have come to realize is I need to go into King Books, books in general, honestly, is way more open-minded. I go into the, a lot of these and I'm just like, this is what I want out of the book. If I don't get it, I'm pissed off, or I'm disappointed. Um, hence my reread of the Dark Tower series. I'm rereading it. I kind of took a pause, and we're going to you know, have a video about goals for 2023, and that's going to be on there. So is hopefully trying to finish Stephen King. Um, but Rose Manor is about this woman who's abused at home by her husband, an alcoholic person, 
um, which seems to be a king trope, but I don't mind it. And um, yeah, uh, Rosie basically flees. She goes to this place where she's loved by like, you know, this, I, I want to say it's a women, woman's house, I think is what it, it ends up being for like women in like situations like hers. Um, and the guy basically follows her to wherever she is and she's like in a completely different area. And she buys this painting and it's got this weird, there's this weird picture. There's uh, the king aspect is like the picture's alive. You can go into the picture. It's like a painting. Um, and then things kind of shift in the painting every now and again when she's like not in it. Um, I didn't hate the story. I thought it was pretty cool. The husband, I can't remember what his name is, but I just know he's an ass. I really hated him. Um, I can't think of his name and I can't see it in here. Uh, Norman. Yeah, Norman. Yeah, I remember that. It's always Norman. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was a total douche. Hated him. He got everything he deserved. And, um, it wasn't a bad book. I did enjoy it. And a lot of people say this is one of his worst. And I... I kind of liked it. I wouldn't do it more of it being a thriller versus just a King book. So I think it's what made it more enjoyable for me. So there you have Rose Matter in sixth place. All right, top five territory. Um, I did have this already kind of set up uh, in a way that I was going to have my top five obviously set, but I'm going to do a drastic in move change. And I'm going to do in fifth place I'm going to put Insomnia. So this was a really solid story. It was a really solid book. I thought it was really good. Um, a lot of you guys really wanted me to read this and I did and it paid off. Um, I really, really did like this book. Ralph as a character was really solid and I like the you know, the powers he has. There's Dark Tower references. There's all these different things. Basically, this is a book about a dude who's got insomnia. He can't sleep. But then eventually he starts seeing things that aren't there. He's got, like, the bald people who, like, do weird things. And, and, like, it, it was a really exciting story. I really did like this. Um, which just goes to show my top five is all books that are four, five, four and a half. I've got, I think I might have two five stars in this top five. So, I mean, I read a lot of good King books this year, and I really started off, you know, I, I think this book is a really solid book. I know a lot of people are going to say, why is it in fifth place? I, it's just because I read so many other good ones this year. I just, it was a it was a big change. So the one that was going to be in fifth place, I'm going to talk about next. But Insomnia, really solid book. I really did enjoy it, and it's a beefer. I would definitely recommend it, though, because there's lots of references in this book to the Dark Tower and other things in the King universe. So, Insomnia in at number five. All right, coming in in fourth place is the other book he wrote this year, Fairy Tale. This was a book that I I had mixed opinions on. I don't remember what I rated it at the time of reading it and finishing it, but now that I've kind of let it simmered, I'm gonna probably settle on about four stars, just like Insomnia. Um, and the next two, or the next one I have here. Um, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was really good. Um, the main character, Charlie, was honestly a really good character. Was expecting Dark Tower references, since, or Eyes of the Dragon references, but there wasn't, and I was fine with that. Um, basically, this uh, older gentleman, Mr. Um, Bowditch, Bowditch, I still don't even know if I'm saying his name right, has got this shed in his backyard that has got a hole that goes to another world, basically. Um, and he's got a dog named Radar. Radar was my favorite character of the book, and that's usually how it goes with dogs. They're usually my favorite, except for Cujo. Um, but it was a really exciting book. It was a great, like, fantasy-ish type style book. I will say the first half of the book, I would say, is stronger when he's still on, like, Earth. Like, he's not in this other world. Um, I thought it was a lot more better written. That was definitely English. I thought it was written a lot better than the second half. When he gets to the other world, it's kind of... When he's first traveling, I would say it's good. But then once he gets, like, captured and is in this, like, prison, then it's kind of like... Eh, it kind of drops a little bit for me. 
Um, but overall, really solid story. I liked how it ended. Um, I, I just loved how it works. Um, yeah, there's also like the sundial and the reason why like Mr. Bowditch was so old and the radar was so old is when you spin on it backwards, it ages you backwards. So it's a really cool thing. And basically he's like got to take radar down there and all this cool stuff happens. So that was a really solid book. Um, fourth place, we have got Fairy Tale. Top three, um, I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering where this, uh, one of these books is because I haven't talked about it yet and a lot of people really hate it, but it's actually coming up soon. But in third place, Under the Dome, one of the biggest books I have read. I read, this was the first King book I read this year. I read it in January. It's been about a year. Um, I ultimately settled on four stars with it. I thought it was a solid story. Again, just thought it was way too long and there was just a lot going on. And as you guys know, that's one of the biggest weaknesses I'll say I have is if it's a literally, I mentioned this about Wanderers too, um, is if, the, and the stand, if there's just way too many people going on, like even King said this in an in interview when he was writing the stand, he was like, yeah, I started getting to the point where it's just too big. And so I just like, I just like nuked half of them. So, um, but Under the Dome, ultimately a great story giant feel or giant like invisible dome falls on top of this town nobody can get in nobody can get out um a lot of people hated the ending um i didn't mind it i really didn't know how else you really could have ended this book i mean what else could it have been <laughs> overall still a really solid story might take me a little while to do a reread of this book um just because it's massive but one of the <laughs> you'll see my number one book um but yeah, under the dome Really solid story. I'm going to sell on four stars and it is my third favorite King book of 2022. All right. This book is probably going to have a lot of comments and some controversy on it. But in second place, The Tommyknockers. A lot of people hate this book. And I see the points why. But for me, it worked. But uh, basically what happens is he stumbles across this spaceship lodged in the Earth. It's called, they call it like a silver disc. Um, and basically it's a book about aliens. This is his alien book and besides the dream catcher. Um, but to me, this book worked. I actually really like, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid book. Um, I will say, um, there are parts that kind of get out of context with what's going on. The reason why I really didn't give this a full on five stars is because there are parts of the book where we just jump to this random other town somewhere else completely and it's just annoying i would rather just stick in haven like please um good references with other books um it just builds off of the world of stephen king you know was pennywise one of the creatures or did these creatures come before pennywise it's interesting stuff and um i really did like this uh but basically like the ship emits these powers and like people can like build stuff with their minds like it's really weird it's an odd story but i liked it it worked for me i'm an odd person i like Dreamcatcher. nobody else seems to like that book so whatever uh second favorite stephen king book this year the tommy knockers okay this next book is probably my all-time favorite book of all time ever of all time like yeah, ever. 112263. You all wanted me to read this book. You all said that I would enjoy it. I had hesitations, mainly because historical fiction. Romance. King is not usually good with writing romance books. Something clicked with him in this book, and he made all of it work. Everything in this book is fantastic. The love between Jake, George, and Sadie is phenomenal. The ending is gut-wrenching, and it just, it, I watched the show, I cried at the end of watching the Hulu series with, um, I get James Franco. I literally cried, and I choked up at the end of the book, which King didn't even write the ending, Joe Hill did. Keep that in mind. Um, but my gosh, this book... So basically Jake Epping is a 2011 teacher and this uh, 
diner owner. His name's Al. He owns, well, a diner. And in his, like, food storage area, there's a pantry that, if you go into it, basically teleports you to 1958. And the book is 58. And the TV show is 1960. Um, Jake runs into uh, uh, characters from It. I'm going to try and not spoil who it is. But he runs into people in It. He goes to Maine. Or he goes to Derry. Um, this book was just so good. A lot of good things came out of this book. I enjoyed pretty much all of it. It was... I can't get this book out of my head, and I'm glad we're finally filming this video because I've wanted to talk about this book since I finished it. And I was not disappointed. You guys were right. This was a really good book, and it's... I never thought anything was going to move The Shining or It or Pet Cemetery out of the top three, and this probably just moved all three of them. And by probably, I mean it did. So, spoilers for the next King Top Ten I do. This is in it. Um, I, I love this book. This was really good. It was great. I finally got to it, and it really did not disappoint. So, thank you for those who kept pushing me to read it. As soon as I finished it, I wanted to like restart the audiobook. It was so good. Um, but yeah, there you go, 11, 22, 63. And the number one spot for my favorite King book of 2022. Alright guys, so those are my Stephen King books I read in 2022, all ranked from my least favorite to my favorite. Um, what are your thoughts and opinions on the ones I read? Let me know in the comments. Keep it spoiler free. Um, if you want to talk about a book, find me on Instagram and talk about it with me. Because Danielle has not read 1122 and I really want to talk about it with people. Um, but, uh, yeah, all great stuff. Again, we'll have these linked down below if you're intrigued with any of them. Don't forget to also check out the podcast, Danielle's channel, all the other stuff we have down there. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you guys in the next holiday episode we have, um, which is going to be either top ten or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.